はいそれではこれから柴さんの発表を始めますタイトルはちょっとお待ちくださいタイトルは「What happens behind execution of an import statement?」です、えーと。発表時間は質疑を含んで30分です。発表前にマイクテストを兼ねてスピーカーに読み上げ事項を読み上げていただきます。Now、uh, we are going to start Shiba's presentation.The title is What happens behind execution and import statement?The presentation time is 30 minutes. Including questions and answers. Before the presentation, the speaker will read the paper for a microphone test. So, Shiba san, Mr. Shiba, please read、yeah. out the paper. So,、uh, my name is Shiba Shish, and the title of my talk is What Happens Behind Execution of an Input Statement? My presentation is in English language. The materials to be shared are also in English, and I'll publish the materials after the talk in Slack. Or through the organizers, and I agree、uh, that my picture can be taken, and I'll also comply to PyCon JP's code of conduct. Is it working fine? Yeah, fine. Thank you very much.、Uh, so, Shiba san, please share your screen. This works?、Can、yes. Yeah, Sam. Looks great. Okay, please,、uh, Shiba san,、uh, please welcome Mr. Shiba's presentation with big, big applause. Okay, let's go.、Um, okay. Hello, everyone. So、um, I hope everybody is doing fine. As I said, I'm Shiba Shish, and today we are talking about the import system of Python. And before that, let's take a moment to thank the organizers of PyCon JP. It's really hard to meet physically somewhere, but it's still good. We got enough. And to start with it, a little bit about me. I am Shivashish and I do data and software engineering at Groofers. Groofers is an online、so、grocery delivery service here in India. And in my spare time, I tinker with earth observation data. I was a GSOC student last year with the PSF. And I love open source software. I worked on a couple of them. Okay,、uh, before we start the main content of the talk, there's always a relevant XKCD. In our case, it's the Python XKCD. And it talks about how easy everything is in Python. And for relevance, there is a nice input statement at the bottom frame. It just imports anti gravity and everything starts flying. That's cool. Okay, let's start with the talk then. So, what are packages in Python? In our day to day uses of Python, we generally assume that directories of Python or a bunch of files are、uh, packages. Are they always directories? Not necessarily. Packages can be something really abstract in Python. For example, if you have a couple of CSV files in a bundle and you tell your import system that, okay, hey, here are a bunch of CSV files, can you import it? And if the import system understands it, it can also be a package. But for a day to day usage, we packages are special types of modules. What are modules? For simplicity, they can be assumed to be a normal Python script with some classes and functions. They can be called modules. And then packages are just special type of modules with path attributes. The path tells us where do we find the package, right? And sub packages, they are packages within packages. For example, when you do from spam import ham, then ham is a sub package of spam. And you can also do from a dot b import c, then c is a sub package of b, and b is a sub package of a in the ch chain fashion. Okay, this is a sample directory structure. And in here, we have a directory called spam, and inside it is a components.py. And here is the content of components.py. And in the same directory, we can,、uh, from, we can do from spam.components, importx, and printx. But、uh, how can we import a package from a different directory? right? That's where Python, path, and path come to help. These are、uh, system wide variables, environment variables. And if you put your、uh, directory of the package in one of these files, Then you'll be able to import your package from anywhere in the system. And for example, we, have, we had a directory called spam or a package called spam. 
so we put the parent path of spam in python path and from any anywhere else in our system we'll be able to import components from spam okay that's about how we import direct regular kinds of packages in a trivial desktop environment okay so uh, let's talk about types of packages now we have two major types of packages one is regular and second is namespace regular packages are the trivial kinds of packages which were supported primitively by python's import system so we have to have an init.py file in a directory and everything inside the directory can now be imported from somewhere else however namespace packages need not have an init.py file you can have parts of these your parts of your spam in different locations in uh, your system and if your python path has the parent location to each one of them then you'll be able to import this spam from anywhere in the system like we do here we try to import package 1 from spam and then when we try to print the path of spam we get a namespace path which tells us where all in the system do we find the module spam right okay so these are some default types of packages which are supported by python import system to import built in modules like os and uh, path etc to import frozen modules so if your module is frozen and for your environment then you can also import it directly with, with without the need of any tweaking to the import system and path entries in path and python path like we imported spam a while back so all of these kinds of packages are directly importable and we don't have to do anything extra okay so that's about packages let's now talk about the import system import system is the idea of how everything uh, happens when you import a package called import x and when you try to load a package x dot mod a function right so let's talk about each of these bits in chunks okay so sys dot modules is the first part of import system so sys dot modules think about this as a dictionary which maps a module name to the loaded module for example in the runtime you try to import requests so if you import request there is an entry in sys dot modules which uh, the key is the name request and the value is the loaded module request it lives in the global namespace of sys so during runtime you can access it from anywhere in your uh, uh, python script this is an example of how sys dot modules are used and uh, before importing requests you check if request is in sys dot modules it's not and then after importing requests you could see request in sys dot modules right okay let's now talk about import lib import lib uh, is a library which comes bundled in with python and basically what it does is if we want to create a separate import system then we can use parts and chunks of import lib and build our own import system right so it also exposes parts of the import system which we can reuse right uh, to to build or tweak the import system as we need it these are some common use cases of import lib we can programmatically load a module for example if you don't want to do import x then you can do something like x equal to import lib dot load module and the parameter would be x right so in your runtime if you tweak a module which you have imported and you want to reload it then you can use functions built into import lib to do these tasks right and they also give us base classes for finders and loaders okay we don't know what finders and loaders are yet but we'll look into them just know that import lib will be very helpful so yeah let's talk about finders and loaders now uh also if there are any questions i cannot see the chat window but please uh, keep it to the end we'll discuss everything okay so uh finders finders they stand true to the literal sense of meaning as in they just find a module so whenever python uh, python parses a statement like import abc then the finders are used to just check if there is a module called abc anywhere in the system or any uh, place where the import system can import from right so if a finder can find a module it returns a spec object what is a spec object we'll talk about it but a finder always implements a find spec method so uh, what happens is there are a bunch of finders and the import system goes through each one of them and asks like hey can you find this module for me and how it does it it, it executes the find spec method defined in the finder object right so okay these are some default finders which are available in the python import system by default we talked about modules so just there is a correlation here so every default module has a default finder there is a finder for built in module there is a finder for frozen modules there are finders for path and python path so you can now understand that if there is a module 
then we need to have a finder to find the model for us. And these finders come bundled in with Python. So uh, the idea is if we want to create our default uh, or if you want to tweak the input system, then we have to create a finder, right? Okay, so these are the functions of a finder. Again, the finder is capable of handling an import, import statement. It returns a module spec. Uh, the spec, it contains uh, metadata as in the path of the module, where did we find the module, uh, the name of the module, and uh, the, like basically uh, there is also a loader associated with the spec. We use this loader to load the module later. Remember, until now we know just how to find a module. So with our current knowledge, we just know that uh, there are a couple of finders and if we say import ABC, they just tell us if they can import ABC. With the loader, the spec returns, we'll be able to load and execute the ABC module later on. Okay, to import spam.ham. Ham is a sub package of spam. So if we are trying to import spam.ham, we have to do it in a chain fashion. For example, we have to import spam first and then we have to do spam.ham. So uh, this is done to prevent recursive import statements. For example, if you do a.b.c and you import c, but a is not imported. And within the module c, there is an import statement for a. You see what's the problem here. So to resolve this, we import always the parent packages first and then subsequent child packages. Okay, uh, let's now talk about uh, import hooks. And uh, you now have an idea how the import system works, right? So we have a bunch of finders and every finders returns uh, a Boolean value like, okay, I can find this object or not, as in I can find a module or no, right? So they return it as, as a spec and we'll discuss how loader works, but import hooks are uh, this fancy term to say that, uh, okay, we can tweak the import system if we uh, load our custom finders and loaders into the import system, right? These are some parts of uh, the import system we need to understand in order to implement import hooks sys.metapath and sys.path hooks. So sys.metapath is a list of finders. We know there are finders, but we don't know where they are stored. So sys.metapath is a list of finders which the Python's import system taps into and checks with every finder if it can find a module, right? And sys.path hooks, it is also a list of finders, but this is used internally by the uh, path importer, right? Whatever is in uh, $path or $python path, it's th these finders are in path hooks. This is an example, or I just logged sys.metapath and sys.path hooks, and let's see what we find. Remember we talked about some default finders in Python's import system? These are the default finders, right? Built-in importer and frozen importer, pathfinder, and path hooks have finders to handle import of zip or normal Python files, source files, right? You can see them here. So what are import hooks again? We said it's a fancy term used to say that we can tweak the import system, but yeah, it's basically the same. We insert custom finders and loaders into the import mechanism so that whenever there is a, a new import statement, like import some random word, if we are able to handle this, our finders and loaders will help us to make the import system understand that, okay, we can handle this import statement. Is it like dependency injection? Kind of, because we are inserting our custom finder into sys.metapath and the Python's import system always checks this sys.metapath for finders. So we should ideally talk about loaders, but before that, let's take a step back and uh, summarize everything what we have learned. Okay, so there is sys.modules, which has a, which, which is a dictionary, and it maps the module name to the loaded module, right? And there are a bunch of finders in sys.metapath and Python's import system, it goes through each one of these finders and checks like, hey, can you handle this import statement? And it doesn't handle it, it just says ki, yep or no, right? So loaders. You remember back when we talked about finders, I said that a spec object is returned and with the spec object, there is a loader object which will be used later to load and execute the module. Well, here we are. So loader objects are used uh, after the spec object is returned and they're used to execute the module and store its reference in sys.module, right? So another thing, sys.module has, uh, has the namespace as in the keys to sys.modules these are the namespaces where all of the executables in uh, your source file or the modules are stored. We'll see how this works while we discuss loader in detail. Sorry. Okay, these are some tasks of the loader. So loader can load from source or bytecode files. Uh, how do we find the source and bytecode files? You remember finders, that's how they function. They return us the path, etc. We load them here. Okay, so they can load from source or bytecode 
and uh, we can if they're loading from source we have to compile the source and after everything is done we have to we have to execute the module and store a reference in sysdot modules under the key spec.in right this is an example of how loading works with the help of pseudo code right so we instantiate the module to none and then if uh, what we are trying to do is we are, so our task would be to create the module and uh, then execute the module so to make compatibility with older versions of the input system we have to make sure that uh, we as in we check if all the functions which were supported in previous versions are also supported here right so uh, uh, we have we check for the attribute called create module which is a function and if it is defined then we create the module this will be a dummy definition of a module as in you see the next line called module equal to module type spec dot name so this is the same function which which gets executed inside create module and this just instantiates a dummy module it doesn't have any source code it doesn't have any attributes it just instantiates it so okay after that is defined we initiate the module with some attributes like like we talked about as a name path what is the spec associated with it what loader is used here okay okay then oh, i'm sorry okay then what we do is yep and then we check if spec dot loader is defined i mean it should ideally be defined right we talked about how every spec should return a loader right and if it is not defined then we raise an import error don't worry what error we are raising here we'll talk about errors in a bit and then if um, okay that's the part where we create the module then we have to execute it and store its reference in sysdot module and after that every time we run a function or a class we instantiate a class defined in uh, the module we are trying to import it will be in sysdot module's namespace let's see how we do that okay before that if exec module is not defined we have to execute load dot module load modules so this function was uh, working before uh, 3.4 versions of python i think anyway so uh, we try to load the module and we store its return value in the module name okay if it is not defined then we stick to the last resort which is uh, we create our we instantiated the module and we create an entry in sysdot modules under the name spec dot name then we try to execute the module in this namespace what namespace in sysdot modules namespace and if there is an error then we delete the entry in sysdot modules because we don't want to have any stale entries or uh, corrupted entries in sysdot modules right so and then we raise an error ideally import errors and after everything is done after we load the source code after we execute it and uh, everything is done then we return the entry in sysdot modules which is spec dot name okay one more thing i wanted to make clear is spec dot name is the full name of the module which we are trying to import for example if you are trying to import from spam dot ham import part then the full name or spec dot name would be spam dot ham dot part right so just add a dot to everything and it works out the, that is the spec dot name okay now let's talk about errors which we found um, so remember sys dot meta path has a list of finders and they had to return a spec object in order for the import system to understand that okay i can find this module right and um, if none of the finders return a spec and all of them return none so uh, by returning none it just tells the import system that okay i cannot handle this import statement you go to the next finder so what happens is once the import import system runs out of finders then uh, it returns a module not found error and this is to say that okay i could not know how to find that module what can i do right and if there is a if a finder returns a spec object and while loading the object while loading as in loading the source code executing the module and creating a reference in sysdot modules anything breaks then we raise an import error with a proper error message right okay so we talked about a lot of things now we talked about sysdot modules for the finders and how loaders are used uh let's talk about uh, how everything is organized in a chronological order right so in the top left corner you can see python runtime and every time you try to import something like import def okay i'm changing you see how creative i am with the name but okay let's import def this time so we if you are trying to import def then it checks with sysdot modules if there is an entry of def right if there is one then it returns it if there is no entry of def then it goes to sysdot meta path you can think why is happening if you try to import something repeatedly then it's just wastage of computing right so we just return whatever is in sysdot module and hence forth if we need to import it again then we reload the module but that's a separate story let's come back to this 
So if we don't find the module in sys dot module, then we go to sys dot meta path, and then we have a couple of uh, finders here like built in importers. Frozen importers. We go through each one of these finders, and if you can see, we have our custom importer here, here as well. So if if any finder returns a spec, we go to the loading part, and if none of the finders return a spec, then we return module not found error. If something if uh, so if some uh, spec is returned, then we go to loading part, and if still there is an error, then we return return an import error, right? Okay. So we talked about a lot of things. Let's now go through a demonstration where we'll try to import a library from a remote server. And we'll try to put an auth call behind the import system as an import hook, right? How cool is that? Well, it's not used a lot of uh, in a lot of places, but you can take some learnings and do or build your own sorts of import hooks in your own cool way, right? So, okay, what we are trying to do here is there is a package called test project, and in here we have a sub module called two, and then inside it is a, a file or a module called three dot py, and we are trying to import print dummy. And we will try to import it from a remote server, and we'll print a value called x, which will ideally, I'm sorry, which will ideally be three, right? So, um, okay, okay. So this is the test file which we are going to execute, right? There is a remote directory finder. This is our finder class which we are trying to import from importlib local. And then we instantiate it with where we are trying to import the module from, and the module name. As in, this is test project, right? That's where that's what we try to instantiate the finder with. And then once the finder is instantiated, this is a finder object for us lf. We insert it in sys dot meta path. So every import statement which happens here on, it will try to import from um, the finders which are there in sys dot meta path, right? So the next statement is importing three from test project dot two and Printing uh, basically three dot print dummy five. So if everything goes right, then we will be able to see five in red, uh, printed in red, right? Okay, let's now go through the finder and loader class. Okay, okay. So this is the class we are trying to import the finders and loaders from, right? So we have uh, something called remote directory finder. We initiated uh, instantiated it with URL and subdirectory. If you remember, right? This is important. I talked about something called find spec method. um which has uh, which re must return either a spec or none right we are checking if the full name has something called self dot subdirectory subdirectory will be te test project here right if there is one then uh, we return this module spec else we return none now uh, what does the module spec uh, what does it have it has the full name of the library as in if you are trying to import uh, test project dot 2 dot 3 then full name will be test project dot 2 dot 3 right and this is the loader object which we are trying to return we'll see the loader object next right so this is the find spec method now let's come back to the loader right this loader object will be used later to load and execute the module okay so we have something like uh, gets these are some util function as in init we are trying to instantiate the class and then uh, this is a util function to get the source code from a remote server right uh, using the request library and create module so ideally what create module should do is it should create a dummy module and initiate some attributes right look at this that's what we are doing we created the module and we are instantiating the module with some attributes as in file name um, spec which will be the same spec which we are passed here in create module function right and uh, for path we are using a dummy path now if you are trying to build a some url importer then you should uh, put the path to the full url right and by installing i mean creating an entry in sys dot module right that's what happens when you uh, when you go to build create module right and exec module once you have created the module the python import system it passes the namespace called module this is the same entry as what we have in sys dot module so if you execute something in this namespace then and you execute the function uh, uh, 3 dot uh, print print dummy then it should be in the namespace of sys dot module so we are fetching the source here we are executing the source and uh, sorry i am just logging that i am executing the source this is a, where we are executing the source and this is the namespace we are passing is the same mod, same thing in sys dot module right if something goes wrong then we do import error right else we return none as in yep the module executed you can henceforth use it let's now go about testing it right so in here i do this is a sample basic http auth server um 
Ironman 154.5. Right. Okay. So, okay. So, we could see five. That means that something went and we could do it. And here are some file requests which you can see. So, it means that we have successfully imported from the uh, remote URL. Now, let's go through what happened. So, we tried to import test project or 2.3. But, like I said before, the first of all, uh, test project got imported and then test project dot two and then test project dot two dot three. So first of all, a module is found. It's then um, created as in by the module uh, module type and then it's installed in sys dot modules and finally it is executed in the namespace of sys dot modules in the key um, spec dot name, right? Okay, so that's all with the demo. I'll share the source code later. You can execute it. There are no dependencies, so you can practically just run the same files and get it working. Let's now jump back to the slides and see what other people have done with import hooks. Okay, so what else can you do with import hooks? With import hooks, you get full control after what happens when you do import X or Y or come up with a name. I'm running out of names here, right? Okay, so you can import from FTP, HTTPS, um, any other sources you can think of. You, you get the control after what happens when uh, you parse the import or the Python's import system parses the import statement. And yeah, you're the king. You can do whatever you want with it. And you can import from a variety of storage, not just Python or bytecode Python files, but from CSV, JSONs, you can go wild or use your data. There are examples where people have used custom databases to store import file, I'm sorry, Python files, and then import system understands it with the help of import hooks. These are some kind of famous repositories, which I could find and take some inspiration from. So first is JSON Senpai. It is used to import any kind of JSON statement. For example, if you have something like temp.json and you say in your Python script called temp import temp.json, then it understands that you're trying to import a JSON. It finds it, it finds the JSON and loads it and you don't have to use any parsers. And temp.json already has your parse JSON. So that's kind of cool. And also uh, you can use the same uh, design while in your organizations, if you have faulty data sets and your faulty data sets isn't fixed for the next print or so, then what you do is you create an import hook and uh, which understands this import system for uh, uh, to import the custom data or faulty data. And then you can get going with it. You can distribute the import hooks and yep, you're done. And this these repositories import from github.com and the third one imports from um, a bunch of URLs, I'm sorry, just files and IPython notebooks, etc. Okay, this is the last thing I wanted to share. So if you have your virtual environment disabled, then you try to lock sys.metapath, you get some default finders which we discussed about, but check this out. If you have your virtual environment enabled, then the first thing at the zeroth index what you see is a finder object from the virtual environment. So to keep your system safe, if you do pip install something in virtual environment, it installs in a local site packages directory, right? And it doesn't go all the way to up to uh, root site packages directory. So when you import something, the virtual environment finder first checks if your custom if your module is available in the local site packages if it is not available only then it goes up to root site packages right so yep that's all i had to share and thanks a lot for attending the talk i hope you have a great day and if you have some questions we can discuss it now else you can always contact me uh, you can get my contact from my website and we can discuss about anything really um, yep that's all thanks have a great day and I'm open to questions. Thanks. Thank you very much, Shiva-san. Uh, we have four minutes. So anybody have some, if, if somebody questions, please write, uh, raise your hands or please uh, write down the question on the chat board. Okay, here's some having question. Uh, please, Shiba-san can see it. Yep. yep. So uh, here, uh, so my motivation when I started studying about the import system, it was that I uh, when I tried to go through uh, building my own custom projects, I got a lot of import errors and module not found errors. 
so it kind of bugged me and then uh, then i went to the import system docs i think that should be a first step you can go check out the import system documentation in python i'll also share some links in slack the track on channel and i'll definitely share the links but that should be a motivation i think like that was mine that you get a lot of errors and after you understand these the, the, the are very small details and when you understand them you don't get these errors you know how uh, the whole import system works and i still get errors but they're very less so i'd suggest everyone to go read the import lib or import systems documentation in of official pythons uh, docs yep i'll share uh, some links on slack thank you for answer uh, we have uh, 2 minutes so anybody anybody any questions No one, no one having questions. Hmm. Thank you very much for this talk. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank oh. you for thank you for the talk. Yes, thank this, you. Thank uh, import, you. Yeah, this, imp this import system is really, really basic and uh, fundamental. So uh, I'm really, ah. Uh, Thank you for sharing your knowledge for, for you. on this topic. Okay, uh, that's all. Right. Any if, if, uh, if there there is no no questions, uh -huh. uh, it's a little bit early, but uh, it's quit. Well, that 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 this session over. Okay. okay, okay. Thanks everyone. Thanks the organizers. Thanks a lot for doing this. And yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So, yeah, crap. Give him a big.